Dear friends, we are about to begin our second session of day two of Women Entrepreneurship Congress. And at this session, we have a good number of panelists. Amra atokun jabo joto kono kotha bolchilam women entrepreneurship niye kotha bolchilam tarar kibhabe finance related shokol kichu niye amra alochona korechi kintu kichu untap jayga kintu roye giyeche kichu kichu jaygay kintu hocche women entrepreneurs they can work there are some few areas in the corporate world and even in some of the areas they can actually focus je oi khane shudhu entrepreneurial activities tader je entrepreneurial ichha shei jinisha tara oi khane dekhate pare so on this very topic we are going to discuss in this session so first of all i would like to invite you with our panelists and they are from our uh, Bangladesh. So they will be able to give you more introduction about the new areas to focus for the women entrepreneurs. Now get to know who are with us. First of all, we have Suraya Siddhika Madam, who is the head of Grameen General Hair, head of marketing Grameen General Foods Limited. We have with us Farjana Khan, General Education. Then we have Aisha Saeed, Head of Talent Management at Bangalink. And then we have Armin Jaman Khan, Founder and CEO, Ramone. Well, welcome to our session. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. So can you please give us a short introduction, what you do and what are the things you have done to our audience to get to know more about yourself? So, uh, thank you, Beauty Actor. Uh, it's a privilege for us uh, to join this session, particularly to develop our own women and own women entrepreneurs. Mm. Thank you for bringing us here. Uh, saying so, I think you have already introduced yourself. <laughs> I meet myself. Um, I'm Soraya Siddhika, currently working with Kramin Danon Food Limited as the head of marketing which is a, a social business. So I feel that uh, we are actually working in a same uh, uh, in the same pace and we are actually working to improve uh, the country's aspect in near future. So thank you. Thank you, Suraya Madam. Now can I have the short introduction from Farjana Madam? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, and I am Farsana Khan. I am general manager SME founder, working for women entrepreneurship development. I have other job uh, as development cluster development, but my main entrepreneurship development. I have been working in this sector for the last 22 hour years, and uh, to uh, bring women entrepreneurs in the mainstream of economy, uh, we are working for women entrepreneurship development. And thank you again. Thank you, okay, Ms. Farjana. Can I have short introduction from Ms. Aisha? Hi everyone, this is Aisha. Um, I work as the head of talent management at Bangalink and I have had a diverse career for almost 40 years, uh, mainly working in a, many areas of HR. And I'm really passionate about women empowerment and have had opportunity to Thank you so much. So, Armin, can you please share something? Ms. Armin. Okay, let's get back to our main session. Yes, Armin, you're connected. Hello? Yes, we can yeah. hear you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Thank you for inviting me to this session. So, I'm Armin. I'm running a startup called uh, Ramani. So, Ramani uh, Services Limited actually provides on-demand beauty services to customers. Dancers and uh, their entrepreneurs in their own right and they use our platform to get connected to uh, customers uh, for home services. So um, today I'm here to talk about how uh, young women can uh, 
can actually prepare for a better and more effective career and also how they can prepare themselves if they want to be entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you, Irwin. And so, uh, get back to our main discussion today. So, Amar kichu prashna chilo suram Amar kas theke je je apni to you are in corporate world. So definitely there are some uh, women or the young girls, those who want to become a job holder, so, uh, as well as the women entrepreneur. So what do women actually lack in leadership qualities or what are the challenges they are going to face in the corporate world? So can you please share a little bit about these things? Okay, thank you very much, Beauty. So, uh, as we are actually talking about our girls, basically, I mean, I'm going to say that there are a lot of roles that are going to be in the stereotype. And it's working for long years. So, I think that actually, I'm going to say that we're actually borrowing a bit. It's just not Bangladesh. It's always in um, across the world, actually. What happened, I mean, I should have studied what I'm going to say, BBC. একটা পাঁচ বছরের বাচ্চা মেয়ে এবং ছেলেকে যখন জিজ্ঞেস করা হয় যে হুইজ ইয়ার ফেভারেট বা কে বেশি স্মার্ট তখন পর্যন্ত কিন্তু তারা নিজেদের কথা বলে কিন্তু পাঁচ বছরের পরে যখন সে সোশ্যালি ট্রেন্ড হওয়া শুরু করে জব রোল তাদেরকে তাদের স্টেডিও টাইপ দিয়ে জেন্ডার রোল গুলো এক্সপ্লেন করা শুরু করা হয় তখন যেটা হয় যে মেয়েটা মনে করে যে তার ক্লাসের যে ছেলেটা আছে সে তার চাইতে স্মার্টার रिजन तो की रिजन तो होते हैं हमें एक्चुअली की भावे तादर को नर्चर कोची की भावे पैरेंटिंग कोची एवं की भावे तादर रोल गुलों के एसोसिएट कोची शेखर ने जेटा है जे एस यू वर आस्किंग जे लैकिंग टा को था लैकिंग टा होते हैं कॉन्फिडेंस है लैकिंग टा होते हैं निजे के हमने की भावे एक्सप्रेस कोची develop at the same time I have these skills so even when I see organization level I may add on that as well like I can see that I am 100% of the role I am ready but I am not confident but when you are 60% of the next level, you are asking for it. I need this new role. I don't know how to do it. So, the basic thing is that you are not aware of confidence. You are not aware of the competitiveness. This is the basic lack. This is the major lack. We all have more powers than uh, boys, if I say this way. So, for example, uh, the way I am looking to multitasking because of the, I'm the brain, right? So, I'm the brain, ready to multitasking. So, I am going to the brain, even communicate with the parent. Kintu at the chela jokha nekta kach kore, tokun she shudhu sheta rupar focus kore, ota complete kore, next role jaye. So she khetru amar kachche jeta moda hai hotche je, jehitu amadar kichu positive side ho achche, kichu lack achche because of the gender role. Amra jeva hai bole tha ki sheka dhone. Amra shobai mile, organization level le, even in family level le, jodhi eto niye kach kori, aur mone hai jime dher egiye jao ta shoho chave. आर एक तो कंसर्न थे कि जैसे तो जो सेफ्टी फैमिली थे कि अनेक शो में सेफ्टी नहीं है कथा बोला है इवन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लेवल ले इतनी हम लोग कथा बोली बट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लेवल ले हम लोग जो भी इतनी आरु बेशी भालो भाबे काज कोडी आर मोन है हो चाहे में दे रही है जो जिस प्रोप शेटा आरु अनेक बेशी बेच जो लीडरशिप क्वालिटी अथवा जी आमी तो आमी शुरू करती हूँ अशुल्य एक ने पुत्र के लिए मतलब मत भिन्न हो गए आमा आमी अशुल्य अनेक दिन तो रे नारी के लिए काज करती हूँ एवं आमदर ऑफिसर एनवायरनमेंट के बीच कुछ नारी आलोकालय का चें तो आमा दुखी को तो मतलब मत होती है जी लीडरशिप का नारी देर मत मनी आती 
এবং আরেকটা যেটা মনে রাখতে হবে যে লিডারশিপ তো কিন্তু কোন নলেজ থেকে আসে না কোন শিক্ষাগত ট্রেনিং থেকে আসে না এটা কোয়ালিটি এবং এই একটা एग्जांपल আপনারা দেখবেন যে আমাদের দেশনেত্রী শিখাসিনা তারপর আমাদের স্পিকারের মাননীয় স্পিকার যে সংসদের প্রধান সবাই নারী এবং তাদের যে লিডারশিপের যে কোয়ালিটিটা কিন্তু আমাদের দেশে কেন সমাধিত না এটা ওয়ার্ল্ড ওয়াইড রিকগনাইজড এবং এর দ্বারা কিন্তু আমরা উপকৃত হচ্ছি এর বাইরেও দেখবেন যে বিভিন্ন কর্পোরেট তারপর মাল্টিনেশনাল কোম্পানি এবং সরকারি উচ্চ পর্যায়ে অনেক নারীরা আছে যারা লিডারশিপে অনেক কাজ এগিয়ে যাচ্ছে এবং অনেক ইনোভেটিভ বিষয় আসছে এখন প্রশ্ন থাকবে যে তাহলে মানে লিডার হয়তো বা নারীরা কম আছে এর কারণ কিন্তু লিডারশিপ কোয়ালিটির অভাব না লিডারশিপ অনেক উচ্চ পর্যায়ের অনেক ছেলেরাও কিন্তু কিন্তু লিডারশিপ কোয়ালিটিটা ওইভাবে স্ট্রং না তাদের মেন্টালশিপ কোয়ালিটিটাও স্ট্রং না থাকায় তাদের জুনিয়র মানে কাজের আউটপুটটা ওরকম ভালো আসছে না মানে উচ্চ পদে না আসার কারণ তো একটা হচ্ছে ফ্যামিলি বাধা অনেক কিছু ছাড়াও যেটা হচ্ছে যে একটা মানে মাল্টিপল টাস্ক যেহেতু এর আগের বক্তাও আপাও বলেছেন যে মাল্টিপল টাস্ক আসতে হয় অনেক ধরনের বিষয় একসাথে অ্যাড্রেস করতে হয় হাউস হোল্ড ওয়ার্ক তারপরে অনেক সময় মানে ন্যাচারালি দেখা যায় যে মাইন্ড সেট আপটাও নারীদের প্রতি সমান থাকে না এ কারণে নারীরা অনেক সময় নারীদের ভালো থাকে না আর ইনোভেটিভ বুঝেছি আর একটা হচ্ছে স্ট্রেস নিতে আমরা লিডারশিপে আমরা পিছিয়ে যাচ্ছি নারীরা পিছিয়ে যাচ্ছি কিন্তু Thank you. Thank you so much, Farjana, madam. Now I would like to come to Aisha. Uh, but as you have worked uh, in Bangladesh and you have worked with so many women and collecting women and then, then doing some activities with the women. So how do you evaluate these things? Well, um, let me give you a couple of examples because uh, I'm also a career counselor when it comes to, you know, uh, as, as part of my profession. So uh, let me just give you one example. Um, I was speaking to a friend sister the other day, and she's a BB student looking for an internship. And when I asked her what is it that she likes to do in her career, she was totally clueless. I believe that, you know, as a fresher or a new student, like who is about to graduate, she doesn't have any idea about the corporate world or what is out there or the possibilities that she has, right? So in that context, I think, uh, Uh, many uh, young women who probably just take it as a tick mark, okay, under graduation done. But they don't really have the understanding that what is it that they want to do with their future. So I think there's a lack, uh, there's a lot of lack of, uh, how would I say it, lack of knowledge in terms of what are the possibilities that one has outside university, right? And I think uh, internships, frequent internships during semesters, these are the things that can really help a young lady to understand what is her area of interest or what are the possibilities that you can actually have after graduation. I think that that is one concept. And uh, also, you know, um, this is about a colleague of mine. She once quoted to me that uh, a main colleague, a colleague of hers once told her that why do you need to do a nine to five job? You could possibly go home and uh, stay at home or do a part-time job. You don't really need to do a nine-to-five job, right? So I think some of that's such a more of like a societal, um, you know, mindset of the patriarchal society. And I think uh, Suraya Appa was saying it, that this is a perception that men have about women in general, 
you are homemakers and if you really want to contribute economically you can but do it on a part time basis don't take it as a full fledged career because you're not required to do that so it's kind of waste of your education or all the effort that you did because it is not even expected that you are going to be the breadwinner or you know contribute to your family it's not expected so you know there there is always that and also um based on my experiences i had in terms of corporate careers i've seen many women who are doing pretty well and then when the first maternity leave strikes in what happens is you know so i hope i can totally relate to what i'm saying what happens is they just become complacent they come back to work but then you would not see them taking up bigger roles bigger challenges they're just simply happy doing what they're doing and if you even give them a job offer outside the company they wouldn't take it right because they're pretty much happy doing what they're doing because they don't want to take any more risks in their life neither do, do they want to grow so all the whatever i'm saying as suraya pa had said this is a lot to do with the mindset that we have there are really no challenges it's all about your mindset whether you want to take the challenges whether you want to grow and it's all it's all about that nowadays i thank you very much thank you so much miss aisha now would you like to go to the uh, miss armin uh, as you have completed undergraduate now you are very young so how did you choose your career how you become just entrepreneur so did you face any kind of challenges or how you choose yes i i want to do these things what motivate yeah. you um so first of all uh, after i graduated i uh, i actually i've always wanted to be an entrepreneur since i was a child but the thing is i come from a very middle class family so we didn't have sort of like the financial means to uh my parents could not give me capital to start a business so after i graduated i just uh, teamed up with uh, one of my classmates and we started a very small shoe business uh and uh, it just took us uh, uh 30 40000 taka of our savings and that's how we learned and the thing is um when like uh, uh after i started the business i uh, i also started applying to uh, uh to sort of like into roles because i realized that i cannot learn business just by uh, starting a starting a business on my own uh because uh, it's very different when in the real business world and when you're doing like a small business uh that's why i got into a corporate uh, job i luckily i got a i got a corporate job in standard chartered bank so i actually worked for i think four years before i started from uh, because uh, because uh, it also took me certain bit of time to understand what the trend is what people are wanting and then understanding how how uh, like you actually manage everything in an organization and then i got into entrepreneurship because if i didn't learn that from my corporate job or my uh, or uh, or another jobs then i wouldn't be able to manage my own organization so yeah so my inspiration was always there but i to prepare myself i did a job before wow that's great great to know that i uh, so many of the the, the uh, many inspiration you have given to our audience is that before being an entrepreneur you can be an entrepreneur you can be a job holder and you can take some advice or the suggestions or information you will get from your job so i would uh, go back to sura madam to ask few of the solutions you can provide for example if we do not want to be an entrepreneur being an entrepreneur how can we can we cope up with this world and how we can show our leadership and so on so basically what happened as already asha pan other said we all have that leadership capabilities but we need to know that um, just self reflections that i have all this capacity number one number two is um, uh, whenever you are getting a scope take it as an advantage and uh, go for it anything comes into your life as challenge actually will shape you up for your future so that's the second one and the third one is uh, what i actually wanted to share that um so for example uh, whenever you are learning something new thing 
please do share with others. And when you will share with it with others, uh, they will also help you to enable and uh, they will also share their learning with uh, you as well. So uh, with collaboration, we all win. And this is the basic strength I think we all have. We can uh, work on it and we can really build our skills, soft, both soft and um, hard skills uh, accordingly. At the same time, what I also want to mention that um, whenever we talk about leadership and other skill, uh, in our back of mind, all this, what we think is uh, we need to be a bit bossy, we need to be a bit authoritative. <laughs> but uh, uh, as a woman leader, uh, the fact is what I believe uh, we can be a very good collaborative and encouraging leaders and that will also help us to grow few in futures and to grow further as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Suraya. Now, I would like to know from uh, Farjana, Ms. Farjana, can you please share a little bit about what are the areas that women can focus uh, that they can shine in their life? Thank you, Vinky. Thank you so much. Uh, participation of women in the higher profession like law, medicine, medicine, teaching, banking, engineering, etc. is no longer in the story. Women are contributing in all sorts of job sector with the same pace like men. Some sectors, most of the sector, uh, some most there are some cases that doctor teaching and banker are doing well more than men. And the, uh, uh, another thing is difference between entrepreneur and entrepreneur has all uh, has some uh, the wishes to be an entrepreneur. She has to be an, an innovator, a source of new idea, good services, and business or procedure. And becoming an entrepreneur is one step lead from in, in, in entrepreneur. Any entrepreneur willing to take consideration of the risk factor factors by herself can come up as an entrepreneur with a venture of their own. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Farjana. Now, I would like to go back to the Ms. Aisha. Uh, so, can you please uh, give your suggestion or give your sharings with us on this very topic? Okay, so, it's about um, Entre entrepreneurs turning into entrepreneur, right? So let me give you an example, uh, which made me really proud. So my grandmother, who is my mom's aunt, who is an ex-banker, recently she started taking um, online uh, saving classes, right, in Muhammadpur. And that made me so proud, right? She's an ex-banker and she has a lot of time now. And she's actually able to utilize her hobbies and make a living or, you know, to start a business online, right? So I think that even when you are retired, even then it's possible to do something or, you know, start an SME business or go digital because I think, you know, I mean, you know, she can also add here that, you know, she, they are able to tap a lot of women at home who are comfortable working from the comfort zone of their house and giving services, right? So with the digital platform, I think nowadays, anybody who is motivated and really wants to, you know, get out there, it's very much possible. You don't need to actually have a physical shop or establishment or a big budget, right? But uh, something I would also like to add is uh, it always helped, like what uh, Armin said, to have some level of... Um, experience so what is actually on entrepreneurship it's basically the way i look at it uh, one is internal and the other one is external right but entrepreneurship in total it means or uh, entrepreneurship i would say that like this is one of the core values at bangalik as well it's about how do i say it you treat the work or the job that you do as if it was your own business right if you are passionate about your job like, you know, if, even if you're a paid employee, but you're treating it like your own business. And when the moment you do that, you're taking up a lot of challenges, you're giving it your best, you're trying to succeed, right? So these are the capabilities. People who are able to shine being an entrepreneur, 
the chances are very high that if they ever try to be an entrepreneur, they can use the same skill sets and be successful. And in today's day and age, where digital is the thing, e-commerce is booming. You know, nowadays, even if I was to compare three years back or 10 years back, women nowadays have more opportunities to actually you know, be an entrepreneur. Thank you very much. I hope it wasn't too long. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. So you have said a uh, very important good points about this issues, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. So now I would like to hear from Ms. Armin. Um, yeah, so uh, here uh, I'd like to uh, say a little bit more details about why I started Ramoni. Uh, it's because uh, when I was working in uh, A2I, uh, it's an uh, access to information program, uh, so I was uh, uh, sort of given the opportunity to sort of lead a project of e-commerce, a rural e-commerce. So uh, when I was working in the project, I saw that there was a lot of uh, women uh, who are who do like uh, who are trained in crafts, who are trained in tailoring, uh, then beauty. But the thing is, they don't know how to start their business. Also cooking, and uh, they don't have the capital to start their business. So then I started seeing that around uh, in uh, countries like India, there were platforms, digital platforms, uh, where uh, you know it's more like empowering women who stay at home or who have the skills. But for some reason, you know, like for uh, for example, the culture here in our country is that you have to get married at a certain age, and then you have to have children, and you need to. Uh, you know, follow all this responsibility. So it's not always possible for uh, women. I mean, it's it's quite hard actually. I mean, to, uh, to follow your follow their career and also to uh, become good mothers. Uh, so at some point, like uh, you know, women actually start thinking that what can I do more with my life? Because you know, like I have time, I have the skill. Like my mother-in-law, she knows how to cook really well, and she sometimes. Uh, uh, tells me that uh, if I could sell my food, then I could actually earn money for the first time in my life. And I, you know, and then I, I told her to join this platform called Cookups, where uh, it's a, it's an app where a home cooks can actually sell their food without any sort of investment. So it's kind of like Romani, where you can sort of sell your uh, uh, sell products or service if you are uh, if you are uh, if you have uh, skills. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah. So the reason that this kinds of platforms like ours uh, have actually come into place is because there are a lot of women who needed this. So that's why we actually uh, we actually had a demand. That's why we are here. And also, um, I'd like to resonate uh, with all, 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 all the uh, with what all the other speakers have said. That yes, organizational entrepreneurship is very important, and it's a culture that uh, I have seen in smaller places like startups and. Uh, like uh, even in A2I, there was a culture because uh, the thing is, uh, it's it's very project based. Like we are given a project and we have to execute from start to finish. So we are made to feel that uh, you have to own the entire thing, and that's your that is sort of the KPI. But the thing is, uh, that that sort of culture comes from the organization, also comes from the educational institutions because I think that uh, in universities, uh, the students when I was in university, we were not taught to own things we were just taught theoretical things but when you're uh, uh, but when you're taught how to like own projects then when you come to organization it becomes you have that mindset that okay whatever i'm doing i actually am responsible for the results of what happens because in bangladesh we have the sort of culture that we sort of uh, just do whatever we are we are told to do we don't own up to things and we don't uh, lead things so that and that sort of a thing that needs to happen on a very broad scale Thank you so much, Armin. Uh, so my last uh, to Ms. Suraya, Madam, is that, that um, you know what, uh, the technology, because of technology, some new areas is coming. And the women, because of the pandemic, even we can see the e-commerce is growing. And the women are coming and more and more day by day. So how do you evaluate these things? And how? what is your suggestion, actually, for new areas to focus for the women entrepreneurs so thank you very much beauty um yes you're absolutely right um, the pandemic also gave us an opportunity to explore more because of the pandemic uh, we were in challenge and we actually explored those 
so uh, nowadays digital scopes has been uh, grown in uh, probably uh, we are jumping from one area to another and we are more into solidarity after this pandemic so female can actually connect engage and have the basic empathy to work on this so i think they can uh, work in solidarity they can uh, work in social business and to uh, the um, modality where they can actually create impact to the society the way Ramon is working or others as well so uh, I think uh, women can more explore on this and saying so but I will also mention that they actually initially need to find out their own passion and how they can it trans they can actually translate it into digital version so grab, to grab that, they may need some technical skills, they may need some other training as well, some analytical and plan, uh, planning skill. At the same time, they may also need to uh, add some brand marketing as well. So, um, I think combining all, they can success in their entrepreneurial world. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Surya, madam. And I would like to go to Ms. Farjana. Uh, for any final remarks as you work with the SME entrepreneurs, any final remarks from you? Thank you. Thank you so much. And the final remarks is, uh, uh, in spite of our working for all women, to make them, to bring them mainstream economy, but we have to try women more competitive that means whatever we give whatever subsidy or whatever support we are giving them output should be competitive and uh, in that case we have not any option whether he is male or female i can uh, give an example that uh, if any woman entrepreneur produce any product and uh, her uh, uh, name or this product is made by woman entrepreneur so the quality may be not up to the mark is not will not written in that product so they have to be all or all in and on the other hand in workplace women have to be more compete more com competitive with male and and my main point is uh mindset should be changed toward the from both male and female, and female may be subsidized, female may be uh, uh, motivated by many organizations or many people, but final output should be competitive, and there will be no, be no, no example whether she is male or female, she is a person or she is an, a person. That's my final remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Farjana. Ms. Aisha, any provide, provide any suggestion for the, the new young entrepreneurs? For sure. Um, I could just only always speak or reflect on my own experiences. We, I, I, in recent days, I've seen a lot of women who have their pages on Facebook. And once or twice, I also ordered online, but I never received the goods. So then I had to follow up, you know, what's going on. And so, it's very important when you start something to take it very seriously, right? So I think uh, as new entrepreneurs, it's quite, what is very important is to be credible, right? And, uh, and also, you know, you have to understand at the end of the day that you might be piloting, you might just start at a small scale, but it doesn't mean that your customers are not important, right? And uh, also in terms of queries, you know, there are pages, where you know you when you do place an order you don't get a response for a very long time they don't come back to you and then there are some pages who would continuously have live sessions which itself is also annoying right so you need to somehow space out on to what extent you are going to market yourself don't overdo it while you have to keep your customers uh, at the end users experience as the most important priority i think that is very very important you know don't overdo it don't underdo it just you know be stable and be credible because at the end of the day you are trying to establish a brand right and for those of you who are, uh, you who are trying to be entrepreneurs for the first time it's very important to i know to be able to work in teams don't think you can do everything all by yourself right it's important you know have one or two friends or some people in your family who are going to you know help you establish a support ecosystem 
I think that is also very much required because sometimes when you take all the pressure on yourself, there's a big a chance of failing, right? And of course, I would, this is my first suggestion, always start small, see the market, tap the business uh, as industry to see whether what you're trying to sell really works or not. If it doesn't work, then accept the mistake, accept the failure, and move on with a different product because there is you know, no limit to learning. So you know, be ready for that kind of a mindset as well. I mean, if you get disappointed and don't move on, that's not going to work. You have to keep on trying. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We, we need to keep on trying. We do not need to give up. The last thing would you like to share, Ms. Armin? Um, so I think everybody has already said what I mm. wanted to say. Uh, but uh, the only thing I would like to add is that in Bangladesh, uh, I think the uh, the female, um, I mean, the in Facebook, the women micro entrepreneurs are very, very active. Uh, compared to a lot of other countries because Facebook has actually empowered them, which is great, but there's a lack of professionalism and there's a lack of being sincere. Uh, so that actually hampers uh, like the entire, uh, everybody else. Like if I am selling, for example, sari and I show like uh, 5,000 taka worth of product and I send 2,000 taka worth uh, of product, like a bad quality product, the uh, the same product if somebody else is selling and and that's that is actually a uh, a trusted uh, you know like real seller that person's uh, business will be hampered so people don't understand that what they're doing uh, also hampers everybody else and if everybody else else is hampered they are also hampered so that's why uh, everybody I mean I think that there needs to be more networking among these women entrepreneurs and they need to support each other and if possible like uh, they can also share resources learn from each other uh, so there needs to be more professionalism and more uh, more honesty i think so thank you so much miss armin uh, i would like to pay my uh, grateful heartful thanks to you because you have added a new value to our session. Thank you so much for your coming and joining and giving your precious time with us. The key takeaways for this session is that the may, all the panelists, those who are joining in our session, they are emphasizing one thing. You need to support each other. And if you have a good product or good service, that will work definitely in the market. And there are lots of possibilities in the corporate world, even in in at your workplace so you need to find that opportunity and work on that issues if you can't do that you will succeed one day definitely so thank you for joining us hope to have you in our future sessions as well